<clears throat> Good morning. Today is the 22nd day of March in this 2021st year of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning I'd like to begin with the reading of the 42nd Psalm. As the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, a thirst for the living God. When shall he come to appear before his, the presence of God? When I shall come to appear before the presence of God? My tears have been my food day and night, while all day long you say to me, Where now is your God? I pour out my soul when I think on these things, how I went with the multitude and led them into the house of God, with the voice of praise and thanksgiving among those who keep holy day. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God, for I will yet give thanks to him who is the help of my countenance and my God. My soul is heavy within me, therefore I will remember you from the land of Jordan and from the peak of Mizar among the heights of Hermon. One deep calls to another in the noise of your cataracts. All your rapids and floods have gone over me. The Lord grants his loving kindness in the daytime. In the night season his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life. I will say to the God of my strength, Where, why have you forgotten me? And why do I go so heavily while the enemy oppresses me? While my bones are being broken, my enemies mock me to my face. All day long they mock me, and they say to me, Where now is your God? Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God, for I will yet give thanks to him who is the help of my countenance and my God. From no wonder they call him the Savior by Max Lucado, we come to a topic that's familiar with many. It's echoed some in the 42nd Psalm, and that is depression or the fog that surrounds us. In fact, the fog of the broken heart. The list goes on and on, doesn't it? Foggy tragedies, how they blind our vision and destroy our dreams. Forget any great hopes of reaching the world, forget any plans of changing society, forget any aspirations of moving mountains, forget all that, just help me make it through the night. The suffering of the broken heart. Go with me for a moment to witness what was perhaps the foggiest night in history. The scene is very simple. You'll recognize it quickly. A grove of twisted olive trees, ground clustered with great rocks, a low stone fence, a dark, dark night. Now, look into the picture. Look closely through the shadowy foliage. See that person? See that solitary figure? What's he doing? Flat on the ground, face stained with dirt and tears, fist pounding the hard earth, eyes wide with a stupor of fear, hair matted with salty sweat. Is that blood on his forehead? That's Jesus. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Maybe you've seen the classic portrait of Christ in the garden, kneeling beside a large rock, snow-white robe, hands peacefully folded in prayer, a look of serenity on his face, a halo over his head, a spotlight from heaven illuminating his golden brown hair. No, no, now, no, no, now I'm no artist, but I can tell you one thing. The man who painted that picture didn't use the Gospel of Mark as a pattern. And this is what Mark wrote about that painful night. When they reached a place called Gethsemane, he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took Peter and James and John with him. 
horror and dismay came over him. And he said to them, My heart is ready to break with grief. Stop here and stay awake. And then he went forward a little, threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, this hour might pass him by. Abba, Father, he said, all things are possible to thee. Take this cup away from me, yet not what I will, but what thou wilt. He came back and found them asleep, and sa he said to them, to Peter, Asleep, Simon? Were you not able to keep awake for one hour? Stay awake, all of you, and pray that you may be spared the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more, Jesus went away and prayed. On his return, he found them asleep again, with their eyes, for their eyes were heavy, and they did not know how to answer him. The third time he came and said to them, Still sleeping, still taking your ease, enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed to sinful men. Up, let us go forward. My betrayer is upon us. Those phrases, horror and dismay, came upon him. My heart is ready to break with grief. He went a little forward and threw himself on the ground. Does this look like the picture of a saintly Jesus resting in the palm of God? Hardly. Mark used black paint to describe that scene. We see an agonizing, straining, and struggling Jesus. We see a man of sorrow. We see a man struggling with fear, wrestling with contentments, and yearning for relief. We see Jesus in the fog of the broken heart. The writer of Hebrews would later pen, During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayer and petitions with loud cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. My, what a portrait. Jesus is in pain. Jesus is on the stage of fear. Jesus is cloaked not in sainthood, but in humanity. The next time the fog finds you, you might do well to remember Jesus in the garden. The next time you think that no one understands, reread this 14th chapter of Mark. The next time your self-pity convinces you that no one cares, pay a visit to Gethsemane. And the next time you wonder if God really perceives the pain that prevails on this dusty planet, listen, listen to him pleading among the twisted trees. Well, here's my point. Seeing God like this does wonders for our own suffering. God was never more human than at this hour. God was never nearer to us than when he hurt. The incarnation was never so fulfilled as in the garden. As a result, time spent in the fog of pain could be God's greatest gift. It could be the hour that we finally see our Maker. If it is true that in suffering God is most like man, maybe in our suffering we can see God like never before. So the next time you are called to suffer, pay attention. It may be the closest you'll ever get to God. Watch closely. It could very well be that the hand that extends itself to lead you out of the fog is a pierced one. If we have lived in this flesh we call human, we've probably seen dark days as Jesus did. Depression comes and overwhelms us in those times of darkness and those times of a deep fog that surrounds and enfolds us like a great palm pressing us, pressing the very life out of us, emptying us. Depression, sadness, remorse, those feelings are 
a difficult thing. They can overwhelm. But the reality that Dr. Lucado speaks of is the reality that God has been there too. God is just not a God of great joy and happiness and control and power and might. But God entered the human flesh that we inhabit and took on the fullness of every emotional complexity that it sometimes can overwhelm us. God, too, knew the emptiness of betrayal. God, too, knows well the sufferings of the great losses that humans have experienced. And he is present with us. He is present with you. In times of darkness and difficulties, know that you are not alone. Turn to those that might offer some solace and help and care. Don't bear this burden by yourself. Remember Christ bore a great cross, the cross of human sin, to Calvary for our sake. He takes upon himself the burdens that we bear in this daily journey. And let him bear those with you to see you through and out the other side to a life that is that offers to us hope and possibilities and renewal. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the blessings of this new day. It is that gift you give me each and every day for which I am thankful, the gift of my life, the gift of an opportunity to share your word, the gift to reveal your presence and your word in the things that I choose to do or not to do. I thank you and pray that you will be present with each of us throughout this journey today. Let us be good and true reflections of your presence and love to one another. And let us be companions in this journey of life with those who suffer, suffer unduly because of illnesses or disease or disabilities or hardships suffer from the losses that they have experienced that overwhelm at times and empty us out completely. Fill us up with the knowledge that you are present with us to see us through. We pray for each this day who gives their time and their energy, their life and their talents to help this world be a better place, especially those frontline workers who in the midst of this pandemic have endured hardships, have risked their own life and limb for the sake of others. They know you, O oh Lord, and you know them well, and we give you thanks for them. We pray for those who are in peril this day from COVID-19 and from other things that overwhelm their lives. I pray especially for our friend Jenny, as she is hospitalized. For others that also are hospitalized and seeking medical wellness, bring them your healing care. And here now our concerns that we lift up to you in the silence of these moments. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you, to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Today brings us sunshine, blue skies, warming temperatures, still a little on the cool side for what we might like. Might be a little soon to jump into the ocean, but I have some family coming to visit that I'm sure a couple of those guys will be in the water, and I'll probably be encouraged to do the same. Let's let it warm up a good bit this week. Blessings be with you this day. Take care and see you tomorrow. Amen.